Hey, what's up guys, Joker here. Today we're gonna to be getting a look at the full specs for the RX 470 as well as the 460 and some initial performance numbers that are being advertised by AMD. They recently held an event where they formally announced the 470 and the 460, you know, giving us more details about these cards and what we can kind of expect. So now we got some more of those details here for you guys. So we know that the 470 is going to be launching at around $149 and the 460 is expected to launch at $99. Now the 470 is really targeting 1080p 60 FPS gamers, you know, at that sub $200 price point. And based on the performance that they're advertising to expect at that price point, it does seem like a really good position for them to be in with this card. And Nvidia doesn't really have anything right now to kind of go after that in their 10 series of cards. We are expecting to see the 1060 coming out very soon, but that's really targeting the RX 480, it seems, at around that $250 price point. And that card may end up being, being even higher when you consider the, uh, the founder's tax that Nvidia is going to go Go ahead and throw on to that. So for gamers that are looking to spend under $200 on a graphics card, and I'm sure there are many of you out there, the 470 and 460 are probably going to seem really attractive to you, especially when we look at the 470 here and the type of performance that AMD is promising on this card. Now this, you know, keep this in mind, this is AMD's, you know, press conference and they're giving these numbers here. So, you know, we don't, you know, they could have been doing this to, you know, make maybe make themselves look good. It's, it's always kind of a question you have to raise when, it, when, when it, their own, own company is doing their own benchmarks like this. So just keep that in mind, but it's a nice thing to look at and kind of you know look forward and see what maybe we can expect on this card. So for the RX 470, um, they're expecting here to see around 70 plus FPS at 1080p high settings in the games that they're showing here. So they have a bunch of games listed here. They've got Rise of the Tomb Raider, Fallout 4, Witcher 3, GTA 5, um, you know, Total War Warhammer, Project Cars, Alien Isolation, Black Ops 3, Battlefield Hardline, Dragon Age Inquisition. The list goes on. There's many games here. I'm going to you know link to all this down in the description below. But they got a bunch of really modern games, hot, you know, games that uh, are fairly taxing in my opinion. And you can, they're saying that you could play all these games 1080p high settings at 70 plus FPS at around $150, which is incredible. That's pretty unprecedented. We're seeing the, you know, the, the lower end GPU market really becoming like the high end 1080p market. Cause I remember just a few years ago when you really had to spend like five, $600 to be able to tackle games at these kinds of settings. And now we're seeing that at around 150 bucks, which is making it more affordable and also more power efficient, not needing as much, you know, well, power to power your gaming needs. We also have a slide here for the RX 460 where they're showing relative performance to the R7 260X. So it's not going against the 370, it's going against the 260X. And this is not, um, you know, I, this is just relative performance really. They're showing in Overwatch that it's getting double the performance of the 260X and 1.7 times performance in Dota 2 and League of Legends. So, you know, that's, I guess that's pretty good I, for a hundred bucks. I mean, you really can't complain right there. If you can get a card, you know, $99 and then expect to be playing Overwatch at 60 FPS, 1080p. That's, I think that's, that's a win-win. And I'm sure there's a lot of gamers out there that are going to be looking to spend a hundred dollars. You know, we'll have to see what these cards actually launch for when you consider EU pricing and well, Brazil and India pricing, heaven forbid. Um, we, you know, I don't know. You guys may have spending like a thousand real for, I don't, is that even a lot of reals? Is that, I don't, I don't know how many reals is a lot of reals, but I imagine, I imagine it's going to be many, many reals. The, the price, the price hikes are, are real. They are, they are real. Now the 470 and 460 are launching with four gigabytes and two gigabytes of video memory respectively. And that kind of makes sense that they're not going to try to tackle an eight gigabyte card here with the RX 470 because it would kind of take it out of that price stack maybe at around $150. I'm sure that would increase cost quite a bit and they probably wouldn't be able to meet that sweet spot there at $150. But if you know, if you want the, you know, eight gigabyte cards, they have the 480s that are $240 or the four gigabyte versions at $199, which are actually eight gigabyte versions if you just flash the BIOS. So that's a thing. Um, but looking down here at the full specs of the cards, we can see, you know, we already knew that the 480 and 470 are Polaris 10 chips with the 470 being a cut down version of that Polaris 10 chip. And then the 460 is a Pol Polaris 11 GPU. And we could also see here the clock speed of the RX 470 is at 1206 megahertz. We still don't have that information yet for the RX 460. 
VRAM, like I said, four gigabytes and two gigabytes respectively, although they are listing for the 460 that there will be a four gigabyte version here as well. For the memory bus, we're looking at 256 versus 128 for the RX 460, and then a seven gigahertz memory speed on the RX 470, and that's kind of tentative right now in the 460. We don't know the final number yet here according to WCCF Tech. And the memory bandwidth, 224 gigabytes per second on the 470 versus 112 gigabytes per second on the RX 460. And the last thing to, worth denoting here is the 110 watt TDP on the 470 and less than 75 watts on the 460, which is important because that means that they're not going to actually need to use, um, you know, power from the power supply. They're just going to be getting all of that juice right through the PCI Express slot. And that's important for OEM system builders, I would imagine. So when you go into, you know, your Best Buy or whatever, and they've got the brand new 2016 Dell Optiplex, I don't know, is that a thing? Do they still make those? You, you might find that with a RX 460 in there. And it's it's good because you don't they don't need to worry about having, you know, additional power coming from the power supply. And if you did own like one of those PCs, without dedicated graphics, you could conceivably just go ahead and drop this card in as long as you've got enough power, which, you know, when the 750 Ti came out, that was kind of a big deal with that, is that you could basically just go get an OEM PC and drop this card in and you should be okay and get pretty decent ga gaming performance at 1080p. And now the 460 is going to be bringing that along even further at only $99. So let me know your thoughts on this down below in the comments. I'd be curious to see, you know, how many of you are actually interested in picking up, you know, one of these sub $200 cards. You know, we have a lot of enthusiasts in the audience, but I'm sure a lot of you maybe are just looking to save a buck too, maybe students and stuff and... You don't have six, seven hundred dollars to go spend on uh, Nvidia graphics cards with a hundred dollar Founders Edition tax. So, yeah, let me know down in the comments below, and I will uh, catch you guys next time. Sure.